So it's Mr. Schwanekamp. Let's get into it. Chapter six, section two. We are dealing with inverse, the inverse of exponents, which is logs. Uh, when you first tell a student that you're going to deal with logarithms, they get really scared. Don't be scared. I'm good at teaching this. Uh, so it's a little bit different. It takes some time to get used to it. Once you get used to it, walk in the park. But you got to figure it out first. And so don't be too nervous at first glance today. Just stay with me and understand some basic concepts. Uh, we'll get through it. It'll make more sense as we go. But again, it's a scary lesson at first glance. So pay attention and know what's going on. Here we go. Make my face disappear. Let's learn some math. Inverses of exponents. So last chapter, we just talked about inverses. Now be aware of inverses. Okay, when we talk about an inverse, the what is the inverse of adding? If I said you had to add something and you wanted to do the opposite of adding, you would subtract. If I gave you multiplying, you divided. If I gave you squares, you square rooted. All right, and then we get into algebra two and we talk about this word logs. And it seems so weird that we get a word log in the middle of a problem. All a log is, what are logs? They are the inverse. Or in other words, the opposite of exponential functions. Okay, exponents, and more specifically, exponential functions. Okay, these two, and I'm, I'm gonna erase this. I used to teach it this way. I don't, I don't like it, so I'm going to adjust the notes here a little bit. These two statements are the, sta are the same exact statement. Okay, log base, and listen to how you say this, log base 3, it's like H2O, it's a little subscript number, it's down below. Log base 3 of 27 is equal to 3. That makes no, not, no sense to you at all, but know that is the same problem as 3 cubed is equal to 27. Those are the same thing. Just like if I were to say uh, 2 plus 3 is 5. That is the same as 5 minus 3 is 2. Now we rewrote it, but they're the same exact concept. My, my uh, first grade daughter talks about a number family. That's a number family that we can put those numbers together and get 5. It's the same idea here. Okay, These two things are related to each other as well. The opposite of exponents. So in other words, it's this, log base 3. I don't like log base 3. What is the opposite of log base 3? It is 3 to a power. So I'm going to raise 3 to this whole thing over here. And what's going to happen when I do that? Well, this 3 and log base 3 are going to cancel because they're opposites. Just like if I took x squared and then square rooted it, they're going to cancel because they're opposites. Hey, look at what's left over. 3 cubed is 27. Same thing over here, 3 cubed. Ooh, I don't like that 3 to a power. If I wanted to get rid of 3 to a power, I would write the log base 3. And if I do it to one side, I do it to both. That log base 3 and 3 cancel, and I'm left with 3 equals log base 3 of 27. Oh, guess what? That's what we started with. 3 equals log base 3 of 27. It's a weird concept, but they're related. Again, they're related just like these two statements are related. And so we can go back and forth understanding that they are opposites of each other. That's how you get rid of it. All right, so looking at this first one, we are going from a logarithmic expression to the same idea with exponential form. All right, again, it's like taking 3 plus 2 equals 5 and rewriting it as 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. Same statement written a different way. All right, it's like saying the square root of 9 is 3 or saying 9 equals 3 squared. It's the same thing. So let's write this in a way that we're a little bit more familiar with. Log base 2 of 32 is equal to 5. If I want to get rid of log base 2, I would do the opposite of it. The opposite of log base 2 is raising both sides to have a base of 2. So this is 2 to the log base 2 of 32 is equal to 2 to the 5th. That's what it looks like. Now, that's really weird because I've got a little subscript in an exponent, but that's what it is. And if we understand that these two things are inverses, 2 and log base 2, they're opposites. They are going to cancel out. So it's going to leave me with 32 is equal to 2 to the 5th. This is how it looks in, exponent, or in logarithmic form. This is the equivalent statement 
in exponential form. Basically, I just raised both sides to a base of 2. Okay, let's try it again. So, again, same idea. I'm going to go a little bit quicker. Oh, I got log base 5. I don't like log base 5. I'm going to raise both sides to have a base of 5. So, 5 and the log base 5 are going to cancel. And over here, that is 5 cubed. Know that this is a true statement. 2 to the 5th power is 32. 5 cubed is 125. These aren't just make-believe statements. They're just rewriting it in a different way. You're just not real familiar with them. All right, let's try another one. Log base 7 of 7 is equal to 1. If I want to get rid of log base 7, I'm going to raise both sides to have a base of 7. 7 to a power and log base 7, oh, those two things right here are opposite, so we could cancel them out. I get 7 is equal to 7 to the first power. Is 7 to the first power equal to 7? Absolutely it is. We're good there. That is written in exponential form. One last one. Log base 3 of 1 ninth is equal to negative 2. And so to get rid of log base 3, we're going to raise both sides to have a base of 3. 3 to this power, and I know that's hard for me to write sometimes, but it's 3 to that power. So what's going to happen? Well, the 3 and the log base 3 are going to cancel, leaving me with 1 ninth, and that's going to be all equal to 3 to the negative 2 power. Is 3 to the negative 2 power 1 ninth? Well, if you learned in our last chapter, yeah, it is. The negative makes it a fraction. And if you square 3 on bottom, oh yeah, that's ninth. That's 1 ninth. So this is the same thing as this. This is in logarithmic form. This is in exponential form because it's got an exponent. Just be able to flip back and forth. You're not going to understand logarithms perfect. But if you can understand, oh, that's a logarithm, and I know how to deal with it if it's an exponent, that'll help you out. All right, so down below, we are going to find inverses of logs. Remember the steps to finding an inverse. Two steps. Step one, flip X and Y. Step two, solve for Y. Let's do it. Log base 11 of X is equal to Y. All right, we're finding an inverse. It's weird. Deal with it. Log base 11 of X is equal to Y. Step one, flip the X. And the y, done. Step two, solve for y. So I want to get y by itself. Well, how do I get y by itself? Well, I need to get rid of this log base 11. What is the opposite of log base 11? And I, it's hard to say this. I always ask this question in class, and students just struggle with it. The opposite of log base 11 is 11 raised to this power. It's 11 raised to that power. And so what's going to happen? The 11 and the log base 11 are going to cancel, leaving me with just y and I get 11 to the x power. And that sense, that looks like nonsense, okay? Just putting that out there, you can be like, okay, cool, I did that, but what does that mean? Let me show you what that means here. And so I've got this set up, let me type it out. So it doesn't like to do logs very easily on here, but I'm on Desmos. Desmos is my best friend. Uh, if you're in my videos long enough, you will know that I would talk about Desmos all the time. That is what a graph of log base 11 of, eight of x is equal to. We'll graph this here on the back side of this paper. But there's that graph. And what did we find was the inverse? 11 to the x power. Look at those two graphs. Think about what we learned in that last chapter, or last section. Those two things are inverses, because if I graph the line y equals x in between them, uh, not y equals y, how about y equals x? Boom, right there. Oh yeah, you can see how they're related. So we found that these two things were inverses, and visually, we can see that they're inverses as well. Hopefully that starts to make a couple connections for you. Let's do it again. This is an easy process. Once you've done one, you've done 100 of them. But you flip X and Y. That's a 2. Then we're going to get Y by itself. How do I get Y by itself? Well, I'm going to get rid of log base 2. What's the opposite of log base 2? 2 to a power. That cancels. 2 to the X is equal to Y. Same thing here. Flip the X and the Y. How do I get rid of log base 9? I'm going to raise both sides 9 to a power. 9 and log base 9 are going to cancel. 9 to the x is equal to y. These two things are inverses. And again, if you jumped on Desmos, you could see that pretty quickly. Let's try it again. <clears throat> a little bit different. Not a whole lot different, though. Flip x and y. We're finding an inverse. Step 1, flip x and y. 
then we're going to get rid of log base three next because I can't touch this. It's inside of parentheses. To get rid of the parentheses, I got to get rid of log base three. And the way I do that is I raise both sides to the third or three to that power. Raise both sides of the base of three. So the three and log base three are going to cancel, leaving me with y plus five is equal to three to the x. And then to finish that thing, I'm going to subtract five. Boom, right there. That is my answer. So again, let's go to Desmos just so we can see that. I like for you being able to see it. So we started off with this log, ah, I, it does not like to do log bases. Let's try that again. So I'm going to go functions, log base three, and it's x plus five, right? Is it plus five or minus five? Now I can't remember. It was plus five. Let's try this. x plus five, boom, there's that graph. And then we found the inverse. We said the inverse was three to the x, I swear I can type three to the x minus five. Look at those two graphs, okay? They are definitely inverse graphs. When I zoom out, you can see that they are, are reflective over that line. If I had this point negative four, zero, it matches up with that point zero, negative four. It's just kind of cool. I always like to see, that was for my son, by the way. I need to close out my stuff when I start typing. My son was having me make him a Pokemon game. And so I may or may not have done that for him uh, on the computer. So sorry about that. I get some weird stuff. I need to make sure I close out some browsers there. Uh, there we go. Y is equal to that. That's my inverse. I could do it again on five. I'm going to skip five. Let's go to six. Flip X and Y. Boom, did that. Then we are going to get rid of log base five. The opposite of log base five is raising both sides five to a power. That's going to cancel. Five to the X is equal to six Y. And then to get rid of six Y, we are going to divide by six because it's being multiplied. And so I get this kind of weird answer, five to the X power divided by six is equal to Y. We're not simplifying, we're not doing anything else with it. That's just gonna be my answer there. Hopefully that makes sense so far. All right, so we've done it. Now we're gonna actually graph it. So, so far you've seen me on Desmos. Now we are going to do it by hand. So Y is equal to two to the X. That's an exponential function. Let's graph that exponential function. All right, so probably the best way to do this is just simply using a T chart. So we're going to have X and a Y. And so let's plug in an X value. Let's plug in one that you're probably not great at. I'm going to do zero. So two to the zero power. And this is a math fact you need to know. But anything to a zero power, two to the zero power is going to get me one. Five to the zero power is going to get me one. Uh, negative 11 to the zero power is going to get me one. Ten bajillion, if I could just keep putting zeros up here. 10 bajillion to the zero power, guess what? It's equal to one. So just something important to know. Two to the zero, that's one. I could get into why that is, YouTube it. Uh, it's probably a pretty long video, but you could do that. Okay, so we got that first point. Let's plug in another one, let's plug in one. So if I plugged in one, that'd be two to the first power. So two one time would be two. So at one, I'm going to two. Let's plug in two, if I plugged in two, two squared, two squared is four, two cubed, two cubed would be eight. Boom. If I went two to the fourth, that would be 16. I'm already off my paper. So I really don't want to go any further that way. What if I plugged in negative one? Two to the negative one power. Remember what a negative exponent does. That gives you the reciprocal. So it's going to get you one half. And if you don't believe me, two to the negative two, that would get me one fourth and then one eighth and then one sixteenth and so on, one thirty second, one sixty fourth. What's going to happen is you're going to get a graph that looks like that. That is an exponential graph. If you've ever heard someone say that it was growing exponentially, it's because the graph starts off slow, but once it gets going, it zooms off the graph. Okay, exponential means goes up very, very quickly after it starts to roll there. And that's what happened with this graph. That is an exponential graph. What we're gonna do is use that exponential graph to graph a logarithmic graph, log base two of X. I'm not very good at plugging in numbers here, okay? I can't just do this off the top of my head. But what I can do is graph the exponential and then flip my ordered pair. So for example, if that graph had the ordered pair zero, one, I know what this graph's gonna have. It's gonna have one zero. We can just do the inverse of it. And that leads us to a good question, okay? 
log of one is going to get me zero every time. When we take the log of one, it gets me zero. So we've got that first point, and then two, one, and then eight, three, eight, three, and then negative one, one half, so one half, negative one, so one half, and then negative one, and then it would do this kind of thing, and you can kind of see what's happening here, that it's going to go like that. I didn't graph the two, four, but uh, you get the idea. There's my graph, or four, two. That is an exponential graph. So here's what I want you to get out of this. I wish we had enough time for you to be the greatest logarithmic grapher and exponential grapher of all time. I need you to know that the red line is what an exponential graph looks like. It was 2 to the x power. So you can tell at 1 it was 2, and then it's doubling each time. So it's 2, and then it goes to 4, and then it goes to 8, and then 16, and so on. That's an exponential graph. This green graph, that is what a log graph looks like. Every log graph, every exponential graph is going to look like that red line. It can change a little bit, but a lot of them look that way. Every log graph is going to look like this green one. It's going to be stretched differently, but it's going to look that way. Notice that it's log base 2. So when it's log base 2, it, it doubles, but it just doubles on the x-axis. So it took 2 to get to 4. It took 4 to get to 8. It took, and so on, and 8 to get to 16, and so on. You could keep going that way. But you can see that it's doubling. It's just doubling on its side. It goes 1, uh, one and then 2, and then 4, and then 8, and then so on. All right? That's what those two things look like. That's what I need you to know. All right? So if I'm doing 5 to the x power, that's an exponential. This is an exponential graph. How do exponential graphs look? Well, they always go through the point uh, 5 to the 0 is going to be equal to 1. If I did 5 to the 1st, it would be 5. If I did 5 squared, it would be 25. I'd be way up there before I could even do it. And so what's my picture going to look like? With just those two pick dots alone, I can pretty much know. Oh, man, that was a bad graph. Start off really slow. Get really close to that line, that zero line. Notice that I don't go below that. 5 to no power is going to get me a negative number. You cannot plug in a negative number there or plug in any number there and get a negative answer. It's not possible. All right, but that is what my exponential graph is going to look like. So what's log base 5 going to be? Well, instead of 0, 1, I'm going to get 1, 0. When I plugged in 1, I got 5. So when I plug in 5, I'm going to get 1. I'm going to start close to this line but not cross it and go that way. Notice that the two graphs look very similar. This one grew faster because the base was 5 instead of 2. But again, this is the exponential. This is the logarithmic. I just need you to know the basic picture of that and understand what's going on. Okay. Ah, that was too ugly. I hated my handwriting there, so I had to erase it. Sorry. Delete, delete, delete. All right, whatever. <laughs> All right, there it goes. It deleted. It was just down here. All right, so hopefully you learned something there. Logs are the inverses of exponentials. If there was only one thing that you heard me say that whole time, it was that. Logs are the inverses of exponentials. Get that and you're good to go. If you have questions, ask me. Check out Khan Academy. Check out the quizzes to get some more help. Thanks, guys.